If you've been paying attention to the U.S. presidential election of 2020, you've undoubtedly heard voter fraud mentioned more than a handful of times. Some people are disturbed. Some people are doubtful. Some people are genuinely concerned. But one thing's for sure. If they were to see voter fraud in the United States in the 1800s, they'd all be stunned. When we talk about voter fraud today, we're talking about dead people voting, ballots not being delivered, some, some voting system fraud and hacking happening. But the voting fraud of the 19th century was very different. Imagine beatings, kidnappings, drunkenness, bribes, all that. But everybody knew about it. That's the crazy thing about this. This was all public knowledge. A lot of people were really unhappy with it and uh, kind of disgusted by it, but this was all public knowledge. I need to give you an idea of what the voting process looked like back then because it really doesn't resemble what we see today. At a really high level, parties used to print their own ballots. So Republicans, Democrats, Whigs, they would print their ballots and sort of hand them out to people so they could use them to then go and vote at a polling office. In some instances, voters would just write their name and their candidate choice on a piece of paper and bring it to a polling office. So already there seems to be a ton of room for vote manipulation. There aren't really any checks and balances on a system. There aren't voter IDs. There's, there's, there's nothing. So it's pretty easy at this time for nefarious acts to succeed. Where it really gets crazy though, is with the politicians and the gangs that they employed. If you've seen the movie Gangs of New York, imagine those types of gangs being hired by a guy running for office to make sure that they win. And all their competitors are probably doing it too. Let's go back to what this voting process looks like. You get a ballot from your local politician's office and you bring it to a poll and that's it, you're done. They know your face, you walk out. They see you again, they say, you already voted. That's pretty much what it looks like. So where these gangs get involved is they start kidnapping people. Imagine it's the 1800s and you're at a pub and you just wanna have a few beers, right? But then some guy just starts buying you beers, strikes up a conversation, and next thing you know, you're five beers deep then you're another six beers deep. So this friendly guy that you've been chumming it up with for the past couple hours, turns out he's not that friendly of a guy. So after a couple of hours of hanging out with this guy, he says, hey, let's go check out this other bar right now. Next thing you know, you're walking down an alley to this new watering hole, and a couple of guys grab you and throw you in some cellar right off of it. So as you drunkenly scramble to your feet and take awareness of your surroundings, you notice there are about 10 other people in there with you and they all look just as confused and drunk. It turns out they all made a new friend a couple hours ago who was more than happy to give them drinks. And the situation dawns on you. You've all been kidnapped. One of these guys has a broken nose and everyone seems pretty quiet. Well, it turns out that your new friend and some of his other friends that you were gonna go meet are gang members. And for the next few hours, you're gonna sit tight, shut up, don't make any noise, otherwise you're gonna get beat. After everyone sobers up a bit, a gang leader comes in and kind of tells you what the scoop is. Everyone's voting today. Congrats, you're voting for this person. Do as we say, don't make a scene, and you'll be fine. So this gang leader pulls out a box with maybe 100 to 200 ballots in it, all for the same politician. There's no such thing as a free drink. You and the rest of these kidnapped guys don't want to get your nose broken too. So you kind of fall in line and say, yes, 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 we will. You start thinking, great, I can make a run for it as soon as I'm a block away out of sight. But before you can even finish that thought, they say, by the way, we've got four guys on that route and one at the polling station. So you're coming right back. So you take your ballot and they let you outside and you walk to the polling station. You sign your name hand it in. Great. Now to go back to my prison. When you get back inside, you see a whole bunch of different clothes scattered on the floor. You're not playing dress up, that's for sure. 
The gang makes you put on another outfit, hands you another ballot, sends you on your way again. The thinking is, the polling office won't recognize him, he's not wearing the same outfit. Just put a different name down this time too, and you're good. So you go, cast your ballot, come back. You and the other guys repeat this process maybe a dozen times. And in the end, the gang generated a couple hundred votes. When it's all done and there are no more ballots left, the gang sort of says, thanks, bye. That's it. And the gang is on their merry way. In a couple block radius around that polling center, there were multiple rooms full of people like this that were unwittingly kidnapped and forced to vote. Now, the example that I gave of this, it's kind of one of the worst case scenarios where you're being threatened with violence if you don't comply. But there were other methods that these gangs employed to get people to vote. Instead of beatings being the incentive to comply, some of these guys were just fed alcohol as much as they wanted so that they would stay in line and do what the gang wanted. It's actually asserted that this is how Edgar Allan Poe died. He was kidnapped and fed booze nonstop and then let loose. He was found outside of a polling place, really out of it and wearing clothes that weren't his own. So the signs kind of point to, yeah, maybe he was a victim of this. But that's crazy, right? That's how common this was. Edgar Allan Poe could have very well been a victim of this. Edgar Allan Poe! The booze method was way more employed than the beating method. As laws changed and the voting process got a lot cleaner, obviously cooping went away. But it's crazy to think that this went on and everybody knew. It was common knowledge that this was happening, but it just kind of happened. There was nothing in place to stop it. The thought that you could just change an outfit, or in some cases, put on a fake mustache, and then go vote again, is crazy to me. I guess the moral of the story is, there's no such thing as a free drink. I hope you enjoyed that walk back to the 1800s. If you liked the video, please share it. Uh, click subscribe if you haven't. And I hope to see you again next time. Take care.